Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Health and Wellness Minister assures that the state of emergency is necessary to protect the citizenry. Alternative options being considered as a peace officer program comes to an end. And the Rotary Club of St. Lucia collaborates with the SEEDS International Program to aid those in need. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, during the sitting of Senate held on Thursday, highlighted the need for the extension of the state of emergency. She explained that with an average of 100 new COVID-19 cases being recorded weekly, the country cannot afford to relax current COVID-19 protocols. One such protocol is the implementation of a curfew, which Senator Honorable Isaac indicated has assisted in curbing the spread of the coronavirus on Ireland. Madam President, there is absolutely no question as to whether or not we need that declaration of a state of emergency. We needed it when we set it then. We needed it when we extended on it the first time, the second time, and we need it now. Maybe now more than ever, Madam President, as we are seeing that the numbers are declining or at least remaining stable, we are, seeing, we are still getting about, on average, about 100 cases per week, and that is still not satisfactory. While it is better than where we were before, it is still not satisfactory. Not satisfactory enough for us to loosen up on the protocols that we have that currently exist, which includes a curfew. Highlighting the worsening COVID-19 situation in other countries, the minister explained that St. Lucia cannot become complacent just because active COVID-19 cases appear to be stabilizing. If you are on antibiotics, Madam President, for 10 days, and you start taking it and getting better, after the third day you are much better. Madam President, do you stop? You have to continue because the end result is to get rid of whatever it is that is in your system. And you require the 10 days of taking the antibiotics to do so. COVID-19 is still with us, Madam President. It is because of the measures that we have put in place that we are seeing some sort of, I don't even want to call it relief, Madam President, because it's just that the numbers seem to be remaining stable declining a little and remaining stable. So this is just a semblance of a relief that we are seeing. We cannot drop our guard or let it down because we can go back to a worse situation than where we were before. We know of Trinidad and Tobago right now, our brothers and sisters there are really suffering. They're under tremendous pressure. We have Martinique, closer to home. We hear of India and we see what is happening. With such a large population, we cannot afford that in St. Lucia, Madam President. We would all be wiped out in a matter of one week. Senator Honorable Isaac indicated that the Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to fight against COVID-19, ramping up the vaccination campaign. A number of vaccination sites were established this week to facilitate vaccination efforts. Senator Honorable Isaac disclosed that St. Lucia is soon to receive some 150,000 vaccines. Madam President, we speak of herd immunity. And of course, that depends on our vaccine efforts in country. I said earlier on that we are expecting to get 100,000 vaccines within 100,000 vaccines that's purchased by the government of St. Lucia and another 50,000 vaccine, vaccines that's going to be given to us from the COVAX mechanism. And we are expecting both of these shipments within this week and, of course, towards the end of this month. So our vaccine effort is extremely important, Madam President, for us to obtain that herd immunity that we are talking about. And we are looking at being able to vaccinate at least about 108,000 people so that we can accomplish that task. The Parliament of St. Lucia approved the extension of the state of emergency for an additional period of five months, commencing from the 17th of May 2021 and ending on the 16th of October 2021. 
With the peace officer program ended at the 30th of April, authorities confirmed that alternative options are under consideration for its wardens. For instance, the Commissioner of Police is considering appointing select wardens as reserves after special police constables in the service are upgraded to constables. In a Senate sitting 7 May 2021, Minister for National Security and Home Affairs Senator Honorable Herman Gil Francis acknowledged the successes of the program since its operations began in December. He expressed hope that the remaining wardens can be incorporated into other relevant state services based on their performance in the COVID-19 response. This project was a, a seven months project and um, because it was so successful that we had to be getting funds to, to, to be able to do that. Um, presently it has come to an end, but the government is actively looking for the, the, the finances uh, in, in ways of like savings because there are positions that where the police has to um, employ more police officers, more fire officers and so on. But we have recognized the importance of the COVID wardens and so we are making the relevant allocations available so that they can be paid. We don't want to have persons employed and two, three months down the line you're not paying them. We want to make sure that we pay them every month um, like any other civil servant. So this is the reason why the project has been shelved for a little while but we intend to continue. Thank you. Senator Honorable Herman Gil Francis, Minister for National Security and Home Affairs. The Senator returns to official duty after recovering from an asymptomatic bout of COVID-19 infection. He encourages the public to get vaccinated. Unfortunately, I gave it to my dear wife and she suffered. But I'm saying that because apparently we had taken the first dose of the vaccine, I think that helped her tremendously. And so I want to encourage all St. Lucians to go and get vaccinated. This COVID thing is real. It is real. And so all of us, opposition and government and, and independent senators and everybody else, we have to make a concerted effort of speaking to our people and telling the dangers of this COVID. We cannot force or we do not want to force persons. We do not want to take the, the way in which St. Vincent, Antigua and Trinidad is going as to be able to force people to go and get the vaccination. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that everybody goes there willingly, understanding, especially if you have old parents, okay, older people in your, in your household, that those are the persons more likely to die if they're infected. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is encouraging members of the public to get vaccinated as its vaccination campaign continues. The COVID-19 vaccination drive this week catered to the general population for the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, as well as those receiving the second dose of the vaccine. Individuals who received the first dose of the vaccine during the week of March 8, 2021 to March 13, 2021 are encouraged to visit the vaccination site nearest to them to receive the second dose. Individuals receiving the second dose of the vaccine should walk with the vaccination card, which was given when the first dose of the vaccine was administered. The vaccination drive will continue on Saturday, 8th of May, 2021 at the Vigi Sports Complex. Members of the public are asked to work with a form of identification to facilitate the registration process. It is also recommended to come with a light snack and water, given the possibility of a waiting time to get vaccinated. The vaccination site will be operational from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, please contact the Community Nursing Service at 468-5321 or 468-5381. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chasney has traveled to the United States of America for several meetings, including key engagements with cruise industry officials in Miami, Florida. As St. Lucia and the region prepare for the reopening of the cruise sector, anticipated in July of this year, Prime Minister Honorable Chasney, who coaches the Committee for the Caribbean and the Americas, has been playing a lead role in CARICOM on this issue. The Prime Minister's discussions with cruise lines will also centre on the development of St. Lucia's southern cruise port. The Prime Minister, upon return to St. Lucia, will quarantine for a 14-day period in accordance with COVID-19 protocols. In the Prime Minister's absence, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, serves as Acting Prime Minister.
CARICOM heads of government stand in solidarity with India as the country grapples with rising COVID-19 cases. We hear more from CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. On his Facebook page, Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, Chair of CARICOM, shared a video of the situation in India and noted how easy it was for the dangerous virus to overrun any situation. Also in a Facebook post, Prime Minister of Dominica, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Chair of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, called on everyone to keep the people and the government of India in their prayers as they continue to grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic. Several other CARICOM heads of government have issued messages of solidarity with India. That was CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. The Rodney Bay Highway Expansion Project is underway and includes the addition of two more motoring lanes from Redway to Bonte as well as the upgrade of water main lines. The project seeks to address a number of issues including addressing traffic congestion by constructing two additional motoring lanes from Redway to Bonte with two roundabouts being constructed. Improving motorist and pedestrian safety by constructing sidewalks and a walkover. Reducing flooding during heavy rains by improving the drainage system in the area. Improving the consistency and reliability of the water supply in the north by replacing the Wasco main pipes, which are over 30 years old. The project currently employs approximately 100 persons. The Rotary Club of St. Lucia collaborates with the Seeds International Program to aid those in need. Hermody Mark has that story. The Rotary Club of St. Lucia has collaborated with the Seeds International Program. The program aims to alleviate hunger by providing vegetable seeds to persons most in need around the world and especially in small island developing states. The Rotary Club made an application to Seeds International and was successful in receiving 1,500 packets of vegetable seeds. The president of the St. Lucia Rotary Club, Lathan Khan, says the strategy of the St. Lucia Rotary Club this year is to collaborate with organizations locally and internationally to continue their charitable work in St. Lucia. At a time like this when the world is facing a number of different crises, we have a health crisis, we have climate change, we have the possibility of military and economic conflicts and political conflicts that could seriously disrupt the food chain supply. And this is why uh, Seeds Program International uh, is, is pushing this program to help individuals in, in smaller territories as St. Lucia to find a way to produce your own food. So it's, uh, it's like a first step towards self-sufficiency at the individual domestic level. And so Rotary is, is very happy and, and delighted to partner with such a prestigious organization who is seeking to do good in the world. At a small presentation ceremony, the seeds were distributed to organizations with existing farming programs to grow and produce with the intention of distributing the grown produce to persons in need. The Upton Girls Garden Center was a recipient. Deputy Director Olympia Vitalis accepted the seed donation on behalf of the center. At Upton Gardens, we do have an agricultural program that have been operating for the past 41 years. And so this contribution is going to go very well with what we do. Um, we provide food for our girls. We cater to girls between the ages of 12 to 18. And we encourage them to be able to develop that level of subsistence living that we speak of. So this initiative is really going to go a long way in helping them provide for themselves at the center as well as their families. So again, I want to thank you for having us receive this gift. As they say, caring is sharing, so we appreciate your care. Wang Son Son, director of the Boys Training Center, BTC, receiving the donation on behalf of the center, says the BTC currently has a hydroponics and aquaponics agricultural program. During the um, last year, when um, COVID really came onto the island and the lockdown, we saw that a number of our boys, apart from these programs, they too started their own farms. So um, a number of them today is, is harvesting day for some of them. Some of them have Chinese cabbage and, and whatnot. So 
this will go a long way and um i must say that um we have all come to, to realize how important food is to us as a nation and um, it is good that we can help the young people to continue to leave um, 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 that legacy moving forward. So once again, I thank you and your seeds will go a long way towards our programs at the Boys Training Center. The other recipients include the South Lewis Community College National Skills Development Center, Castries Comprehensive Secondary School, St. Mary's College, and the Rotary Club of Grosley. The organizations are expected to prepare a summary report on the successes and challenges during the planting process, as well as include photos of crops to be sent to the Seeds International Program for accountability purposes. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dimark reporting. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says it is too early to count the cost of recovery from the impact of the last two free volcanic eruptions. CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis has the details. Speaking during an appearance on a Facebook program titled Anu Palais, hosted by Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarrett, Dr. Gonzalez said the World Bank projects very preliminarily that the cost for reconstruction of infrastructure and agriculture is in the region of 100 million U.S. dollars. Dr. Gonzalez says the cost analysis has to consider humanitarian aid, clearing the ash, reconstruction and repair to infrastructure including schools which are now functioning as shelters, rebuilding agriculture and animal husbandry. He said that his government's sensible public policy led to the establishment of a contingency fund, which has given it immediate access to funds to aid its own humanitarian response. He noted, however, without regional and international solidarity in the long term, St. Vincent and the Grenadines would not be able to recover optimally. There's a good spirit. Things are such with people that they're saying, look, we're going to see this thing through. We're going to rebuild better. We're going to rebuild stronger. Um, we have our social solidarity, which is critical to this particular phase of humanitarian relief. And then the next stages of recovery and reconstruction. Without the social solidarity, we wouldn't be able to do anything optimally successfully. Prime Minister Gonzalez was thankful that there has been no loss of life or injury since eruptions began on April 9th. He noted that security on the ground has been vigilant, especially preventing people from going back into the red zones during periods of lull of volcanic eruptions. Prime Minister Gonzalez also explained the current state of the volcano. You live in the uncertainty as to when it is erupting again. Three days ago, it had a, 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 another eruption, another explosive eruption. Fortunately, the last few eruptions, there have been several of them, they have not have had the extent of the energy. But in some cases, you, you had pyroclastic flows because rather than going up in the sky, in the atmosphere, the, the material comes over the volcano and runs down on the western side, which is the lower lip of the crater. Fortunately, those pyroclastic flows have not gone into areas of human habitation. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, speaking there. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au temps, Janelle. Merci, Madame. Débattement, qui nous est-ce que ça veut dire pour information à gouvernement cette le ça c'est GIS, à ce moment-là, télévision nationale, puis à NTN. Car pour cette nouvelle Aquayol, pour cette Primus Hutchinson.
ministre des Affaires agricoles, en cette ci honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a explication concernant les démarches que le gouvernement Japon pour adresser la situation organisation qui tient une responsabilité pour l'exploitation fixe cette ci la CNFTO, et pour démentir le rapport qui a sorti à ce média pays-là. Selon un ministre agricole, là, plusieurs fois, NFTO a approché le gouvernement pour assistance. Et la dernière fois, ça fait, le gouvernement a tenu pour faire comprendre qu'il n'est pas possible pour qu'il continuellement supporter l'organisation. Le ministre Ezekiel Joseph a remarqué que, comme le comité Winfresh n'a pas existé à l'Angleterre encore, et comme le gouvernement de l'Angleterre a continué pour montrer l'intérêt à l'industrie fixe, il était nécessaire pour former un comité pour établir une structure neuf. Le ministre agricole a expliqué que l'Angleterre a été pour y former un comité sala et puis un consultant pour guider l'opération. On a vu que Joseph dit que NFT a été aussi ni un membre à ce comité. Le ministre agricole a déclaré que le consultant présente trois options pour placer NFTO à des position pour continuer à opérer effectivement. Toutes les trois options, le consultant a dit que le gouvernement ne peut pas faire La première option, c'est pour le gouvernement entrer et puis un memorandum of understanding between NFTO et puis le gouvernement pour le gouvernement contrôler le figure entièrement. Ça, c'est yon. L'autre, là, c'est pour le gouvernement. Um, acheter 51% de NFTO et puis contrôle, contrôle le FIG là. Right? Et puis l'autre là, c'est pour le gouvernement pour le FIG là. Right? Nous disons que le ministre, nous ne sommes pas pour le FIG là. Ça nous voulons que le gouvernement, le premier ministre, c'est pour nous plus pour nous assurer que nous avons un restructuring moving forward, that, um, nous assurer que la hand nous avons mis là, que nous avons mis de manière qui nous bénéficie de ces femmes là. Selon le ministre agricole, là, après plusieurs discussions et puis NFTO pour examiner ces diverses façons qui consultent et si jouer pour l'organisation salariale opérée, ils ont arrivé à des positions pour considérer une assez structure salariale. Structure nous venir plus confortable et puis, et puis mal cabinet et puis c'est pour tout pour nous trois membres gouvernement à l'aide de la ni à bord de mouvement neuf pour à bord de sept monde ni trois gouvernement et puis quatre pharmas. So which means pharma still involvé en figla. Nous parlons pas de contrôle figla. Parce que si nous devons pas contrôler figla, nous devons aller puis il y a une recommandation dans la consulte de la porte. Which means c'est moi. Nous même, c'est un membre comité ça qui met des recommandations ça. Le moment aller au petit gouvernement, ça nous t'es d'accord. C'est chairman chez Platika et puis et puis pharmas là. Gouvernement dit depuis ministre a pas pas d'accord pour ces recommandations, le consultant l'a mis pour le gouvernement pour le figlet, et puis le cabinet dit, d'accord, il va mettre pour le figlet. Ça, c'est le changement que vous voulez, c'est le chairman, et puis le gouvernement. Donc, le gouvernement a mis trois membres, le fameux là, il quatre, et puis le chairman, il y a le gouvernement. Right? Le moins, et puis M. Monroe Zébitimni, il dit, ça va être le gouvernement. Less power, parce que si on est chairman, ça so veut dire qu'on a less power. Nous ne voulons pas de power. Ça nous voulons, c'est pour voir comment nous allons restructurer la figure. Mettez la hand, la hand nous allons mettre, c'est pour voir comment l'industrie va continuer à se développer. Right? Vous ne dites pas d'accord. Non, nous avons un côté, nous avons fait un petit la hand, ou ça, et puis avec Covid, la hand n'a pas arrêté. Le ou vie ou vie ou timen, moi ou ti gouvernement encore, gouvernement de yon pa kay mette pièce la a a ba structure um, NFT ou bluzen, yon kaz yon pa confortable, et puis mette la an um, an manye sa, a ba structure sa. Mais monsieur, madame, nous kay ni ti et plus a sou information, a ve wapon, a sou a fè sa la, sou développement sa la, a sou an lot, a uh, programme a sou an lot nouvel. Premier ministre, set le si, on a ab Alain Chasne, cha akor, ou enforcé pour un qui ajoutement qui gouvernement posé à ce restriction pour suspendre diverses activités à pays par qu'il affecte l'élection générale n'importe les yo considéré eh bien annoncé pour une chasse ou enforcé pour ça là durant une session parlement récemment côté parlement approuvé 
proposal pour ajouter à ce restriction des secours pour ces semaines, pour ce mois, commencer le 17 à mois de mai pour le dernier quartier à l'année ici. Commencer à mois octobre, qui est l'élection générale supposée pour un coup, à la constitution cette ci pour un ministre là faire comprendre l'action ça là, pas qu'il affecte l'élection générale à cette ci Il fait comprendre aussi, Trinidad tenait l'élection du moins en temps, même manière, et que ça n'a pas affecté l'habilité du pays pour tenir l'élection générale. Pour un ministre Chasné, il fait comprendre, il y a une décision qui était critique, c'est pour dire que l'élection est faite en plus meilleure façon que possible. Selon la Constitution, c'est le gouvernement s'a servi de discrétion et mis en bout à sous restriction des secours n'importe les durant cinq mois là pour faire possible pour une élection générale. Le gouvernement aussi n'est plein pour une discussion et puis même opposition concernant ce protocole qui a gouverné le corona et qui a gouverné l'activité nationale ça là, ça c'est l'élection générale là. Le Premier ministre Chasné explique aussi ses attention au gouvernement pour certainement coopérer et puis les membres opposition pour faire assurer que l'Union bonne comprenne en parmi eux tout concerné en quelle façon pour établir le protocole qui a adressé obligation et commitment tous les deux face à ça. Là. Comme saison cyclone qui a préparé pour commencer, encore encore, le ministère des Affaires, de Construction et Travaux, j'ai mis des plans en place pour mobiliser les machines de secours pour la situation. Ces autres cyclones ont commencé depuis un mois de juin pour novembre et c'est du moment que ces cyclones ont formé à ce Golambe en face de pays. Officier de communication en ministère de la M. Shannon Le Bon, déclaré que l'année groupe ingénieur qui a conduit l'assessement à ces diverses la rivière. En cette ci et pour commencer un programme pour nettoyer toute boussaille qui comblait en ces la rivière ça là. Il a ajouté que il a aussi débranché pied bois, particulièrement ces branches là qui j'allongé trop à ce chemin avec l'autre façon comme qui a fait quand il a fait tous les années et qui a porté huit et danger. Ministère a aussi fait un grand appel pour membres public là qui n'est propriétaire pour savoir que nous avons une grande responsabilité pour faire ces arrangements qui sont très nécessaires en préparation pour si un cas de cyclone attaqué. M. Le Bon, veut dire un conseil, ça c'est mêlé pour que ça commence à débrancher pieds et faire ces divers arrangements en préparation pour la saison cyclone. Ça là. Officier de communication, Kakweki, préparation pour le cyclone, c'est une responsabilité nous toutes qu'on citoyen à cette ci Et c'est comme ça que nous avons là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder, je vous remercie une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas considérer qu'on s'est la vie dans les présentations de l'autre nouvelle à Coyole. Après ça, je vous remercie pour cette présentation à la CGN et aussi pour vous souhaiter un bon finissement de semaine. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.